Hey guys, I'm Phil Town from Rule One Investing, and today I want to talk to you about the three ways we can look at a company to value it when we're thinking about investing in it. Now, contrary to popular belief, picking stocks out of the thousands that are out there in the market is not at all the same as picking companies out of a hat. Although I will tell you that the Wall Street Journal hired a monkey once to go pick stocks out of a hat and he beat the best fund managers in New York two years in a row. So maybe you could have that monkey work for you. I don't know. But generally speaking, if the monkey is not available, this is going to require uh, some investigative work. That's just the way it is in order to really figure out whether you should invest in this company. And that work is going to help you understand the company inside and out. Man, if you don't understand the business, everything else you do doesn't matter. You can't figure out the value, obviously, if you don't know what the business does. And obviously, there's no shortage of information about figuring out what the business does online. There's a massive amount of it. All that information, which can be extremely overwhelming. One of the biggest changes in the way the world works is since they got the internet going about you know 20 years ago and made this information available about stocks, all of a sudden, instead of having no information, we're overwhelmed. So there's a lot of contradictory opinions about uh, you know how the best way to use all that data and value companies. So today I'm going to show you what we do. I want to discuss my top three valuation methods of a company that as a rule one investor, these are the things you have to absolutely know. And they're really pretty simple especially the first one. Let's dive in. Oh, but before I really get going, it's worth noting that in order to succeed in investing in the stock market, you do have to have a rational system of investing, a rational strategy. You just can't blindly put your money in stocks, you know, throwing a dart at the market and expect to achieve great returns. You could probably do whatever the market's doing that way. And I think they've proven that. But in terms of beating the market and getting extraordinary returns, no, that would turn out to be risky and expensive in the long run, particularly now when the stock market is at, you know, really astonishing high levels as a result of low interest rates and enormous amount of government interference in the bond market, which makes the market look cheap. And so people buy into it a little bit like what happens with real estate. If interest rates go down, wow, real estate looks cheap, right? And so what happens? It goes up fast because people start buying it a lot. So there's a lot of talk in the invested community about diversification. Uh, This just simply means you're investing your money in a way that provide a safety net should one investment uh, turn out to not be a great investment. Um, But most people massively over diversify. You don't need to massively over diversify if you know how to invest. In fact, good research is in now that says that The over diversification of buying, let's say the S&P 500, which is 500 stocks or buying a bunch of different ETFs, you know, ending up with several hundred stocks in your portfolio by virtue of these different uh, investment funds doesn't protect you one bit better than buying 18 stocks that are in different uh, that are not all in the same industry. They're in different industries. So you don't require enormous diversification. And what enormous diversification does is it levels you to whatever the market's going to do. And while I realize the markets have been crazy great for the last decade, right? If you don't consider what happened to it in 2008, it looks like it's just been a straight up run. And some of you are out there investing and thinking only always goes up, but it doesn't. And we're very, very near the edge, I think. So we're going to have to pay attention to understanding businesses because we don't want to be in the market when the whole thing drops like a brick. So listen up. Make sure you pay close attention to these three valuation methods that I use when choosing a company to put money into. First, I want to be sure that the company I'm looking at has a big margin of safety. Now, the margin of safety in business school is called the discount rate. You can buy a wonderful business at, right? We use 50% off of the fair value of the company. So we go out and find the fair value of the company, and then we discount it by 50%. And that's the price we pay. And the reason that we discount it by 50% is because we want to pay a price that accounts for all the different vicissitudes that can happen in life. Things can go up and down. Now, because the margin of safety is 50% of the sticker price, we can purchase businesses with much higher rates of return, potentially, 
and much lower risk, right? If we're not buying them anywhere near what they're worth, then the chances of them going down a lot from this point is pretty low. Manesh Prabhai, one of the best investors in the world, and you can look at his YouTube videos here on YouTube, fabulous investor, likes to buy with a margin of safety so good that he says it's like getting a free lottery ticket. There's just no downside. It's just all upside. If you get it right, you might hit the lottery big time and get a 10, 10 bagger, you know, a thousand percent return. And if you just do okay, you're gonna make money. So setting this limitation on the price of a business before you buy it really helps to protect you by having that extra 50%. Not only that, but it jacks your returns remarkably. If you get it right much of the time, think about that. Let's say the company has some problem, it goes down by 50%, you buy it, that's pretty great. You buy it with this 50% discount and the problems get fixed three years later, it's back where it was on the stock price and you just doubled your money. That's a 26% rate of return. Now, I've got a set of calculators on the website that'll help you calculate your margin of safety price. Just go to the website, ruleoneinvesting.com, and you'll save yourself a lot of headaches trying to figure it out on your own using Excel, which you can also do. You go buy my book, rule number one, I show you how to do this with Excel. All right, the next thing I love to look at is what I call a capitalization rate of return. This is something I've learned from real estate, doing real estate over the years. It's something Warren Buffett uses quite a lot when he buys real estate or a farm or a company. And what we like to see when we buy real estate, and you're gonna laugh if you're buying real estate these days, is a 10% return on the purchase price of the real estate. That is after all the expenses of the real estate, I, you know, I, I pay off, um, not the mortgage, this is assuming I'm buying all cash or it's treated like that but I pay off the cost of, you know, moving, taking the garbage out and, and doing the landscaping and the occasional painting and the occasional replacement of the refrigerator, all that stuff. And then when I'm all done, I've got money left over at the end of the year. And that money I want to see is at least 10% of what I paid for that house or that building. This in real estate is called the cap rate. So we call it a 10 cap. This is a 10 cap rate, 10% capitalization rate on the money you paid for the business. All right. So the 10 cap is really popular for real estate for sure. Um, so we're not talking about growth here at all. We don't even look at that. We have wonderful way to value a business without even knowing if it's going to grow a lot. What we do is we look out 10 years, 10 years, and we see the business will be doing as well or better than it's doing now just like real estate, okay? So if I bought a piece of real estate here near where I live, I know the county is growing. I know that kind of Atlanta's moving south. I know that it's very, the good schools around here, the good neighbors, uh, low crime. I know this neighborhood is very likely to improve its prices over time, at least with inflation, right? So I have a very high degree of confidence that that's gonna happen. That's what I need for buying this business. So if I'm looking at Apple computer, I got to look out 10 years and say, I, ha I have a high degree of confidence this will be a bigger company in 10 years, right? Or any other company I'm looking at, Chipotle, Mexican Grill, whatever. So looking out 10 years, is it going to be bigger? Okay, probably high degree of probability. Then all I need from that point is just understanding what we call owner earnings. Now this is taking away all that nasty accrual accounting that they do on public companies that just makes everybody nuts. It's just using cash. And the formula is very, very simple. I'm going to take the operating cash flow of the business. Okay. I'm going to add whatever they paid in taxes this year to that. So let's say they got $10 of operating cash flow and they've got a dollar of taxes that they paid. So now I've got $11 and then I'm going to subtract the maintenance costs of just maintaining the business, not the capital expenses to grow the business, right? Just whatever cost to maintain it. So this is just like real estate. I'm not going to plug in the cost of building out a second unit or a second floor or turning the garage into a mother-in-law unit. I'm just going to stick in the cost of maintenance. So now operating cash flow is the cash you actually have at the end of the month except for the maintenance costs. So I'm going to take those off of there. I'm going to add back in the taxes. There's a reason we do that. We want to match it up with real estate, which doesn't consider taxation. So now what I've got is taxes I paid plus my operating cash flow 
minus my little bit of maintenance there. And what I have left is owner income. Now, owner income is really cool. Owner income is the amount of money I could put in my pocket if I don't care about growing this business. And what I want to see is that that is 10% of the purchase price of this company. Really simple, you guys. All right. Now, the last one that I'm looking at is called the payback time. It's specifically the eight-year payback time. Now, this comes from my experience out doing private equity. In private equity, you don't expect to be able to sell the company with a high degree of liquidity. You buy it, you got it. It's yours. So what we wanted to see in private equity is when we buy the company, the cash flow from that company will pay itself off in about eight years. That way, at the end of eight years, we just got nothing but net, right? It's all money coming, flowing in. The entire company has been paid for in eight years. So payback time, which I wrote an entire book about called Payback Time, which became a number one New York Times bestseller. Go take a read. And so I'm not going to go into the whole thing right here, but it does give you a sense as an owner how long it takes you to get your investment back based on this historical cash flow stream. This is another cash flow way of looking at the market. So here's what you need to know when you're looking at the payback time. We want to look at what is the cash flow coming out of the company on a kind of per share basis. And we want to grow that at whatever that growth rate is. And then we're going to see how long it takes every year to add up total cumulative to the payback time, of, which is the price we paid for the company. Now, if it's eight years or below, that looks like a pretty good time to buy that company. If it's above eight years, not so great. My favorite amount of time is six years and below, though. Six years and below. Now, I know I barely scratched the surface, you guys. So now you want to learn about these methods and how to set yourself up for financial success by using them. And man, you can use them for everything from buying real estate to buying a farm to buying a business privately to buying stock. Then just join with us. It's great. We're going to go into this in great detail in our three day virtual investing workshop, which we do with all of our live instructors. And you're going to have all kinds of help. And it's really fun. And we go deep into these calculations and so much more as well. So don't sleep on this stuff. Get out there and do it, you guys. Rulers around the world are getting seriously ahead of this stock market. And this stock market is going to present opportunities to you here that are going to be lifetime opportunities to create wealth in the near future. And they're doing it. And so can you. Now, I'd love to hear from you guys. What are the top three things that you look at when you're figuring out what is this business worth and how much should I pay for it? You just, you know, leave a comment there with your answer and I'll be sure and follow up with you. And thanks for watching. Now go play. Hey, if you enjoyed this video and you think it was valuable in teaching you more about the three things to look at when valuing a business, hit the like button and share this video with your friends, you guys. And if you want more investing content, subscribe to my channel. And by the way, don't forget to click the button. It's got a free gift for you. And thanks again for watching.